There's no such thing as the end of God. If he hasn't done something yet, he can do it the next minute. But you must keep believing God. Hallelujah, somebody. said that uh, you know that I was infertile because of a, a you know disease that they diagnosed me with and uh, they put me on medication but God went ahead and uh, healed me from that even without the medication and uh, this is living proof of what God can do and after four years we now have promise because uh, is the promise that God gave us the promise of God you do not leave this place the same. You leave here empowered into new dimensions. And I curse any attack of the enemy that's attempting to come against your mind or your heart today. I curse it and I return those arrows to its sender. We know that backsliding is out there. We know that it can happen. Um, but for me, the lifestyle that I come from, the lifestyle of hustling, the lifestyle of whoring, um, the lifestyle of, you know, being in discipline, the lifestyle of being a manipulator, it leads to not only a mental death, but a physical death. So for me, there's no option to go back to that life. You know, we really had the lifestyle that we thought what we wanted, but it was empty, it was shallow, there was, there was no meaning to it all. You could never get enough. It was... Never I mean, had enough stuff. Never had enough stuff, never had enough, I mean, whether it was sex or drugs or, or money or travel, things, things <laughs> stuff, clothes, you could never have enough. And so eventually that desire to achieve more led towards uh, a drug addiction that just spiraled out of control. So um, uh, it got to the point where I couldn't function at work anymore and our relationship crumbled. Uh, my wife tried to commit suicide. Um, finally, we got to a point where we were days away from being homeless. We remembered there was this God character, you know, that uh, we, we grew up with, and if he gave his son to die for us to forgive us of sins, that, you know, then he could forgive us too. And if he'd forgive us, then, I don't know, maybe he could help us through this process. And so we kind of got on our knees and we prayed, and then we went looking for a church. We want to welcome you into your Father's house today, amen. Let's just begin to bring down the power of God in this place. I was faced with death, where two people had a gun to my chest, you know, looking to see if we had anything, any money or anything stashed in the house or, you know, any drugs stashed in the house. And before I knew it, we're in a room with my daughter, who's an infant then, and, you know, my kid's dad, and we're in a room where they're going to kill us. By the time the police came, they asked, how many shots did you hear? And all I remember is hearing three shots, throwing my daughter in the closet. They said, no, actually there's 53 shots in this room. There should be nothing, nothing formed against you. No weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon formed against you shall ever prosper. 53 shots in a room two guns to your chest and not one hit you not one hit my daughter it just you know and then from there that seed it was like you know what there has got to be a better life than this the church gmi our church family believed in, in, in miracles they believed in the miracles of the Bible, power of god the power of god that the power of god was real it wasn't it's not a story that was just significant for the Old Testament and that healing is true and, and people can be changed and that lives can be rebuilt. If someone told me they didn't believe God's power is real, I would say, well, if you believe, you shall receive. I would say be expectant yes. and come open-minded to receive a miracle. Mm -hmm. And you'll never know that God's power is real unless you experience it yourself. So you've got to be willing to have that encounter with God. There's a lot of people around this world who just, they just feel hopeless. 
they feel like they're the only one experiencing it because even as believers it's it's like we get cleaned up and a lot of times we forget where we came from and we walk around like we have it all together at all times and it's not the truth of the matter even currently as we're doing this video I haven't spoken to my daughter in a year we haven't spoken like a mother and daughter should in a year but I still hold on and I trust in the Lord that he'll work this out somehow some way so it's how do you have the recipe to success and you decide to keep it to yourself and not invest it and share it with other people to pull them out of the situations that they're in he can do all things you have to trust and believe in him he loves you he died for you and his father rose him from the dead and he is alive when you walk into a place where you hear the word taught but then when church is over, when you turn the lights out, you turn the air off, you close the building, and you see those people outside of there, and they live the life daily that we talk about, then you know how real the power of God is in a place. We see that power when we're in church, when we're, when we're praying together, when one of the pastors are, are given a sermon, or when you know, the worship team is, is praising God. You just, you feel it in your heart. You feel it, you know, there's a, there's a release of the bondage. The chains seem to melt away. You, you seem to feel free. No matter how you walk into the room, the way you walk out is different. You feel anointed and, and loved and cared about. And it's just, it's, it's a wonderful feeling. You know God is real in you, my church. There is power. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain.